Thanks for watching teachvid.com. I'm Stephanie Ayers. Today we're going to talk about different types of data and graphing. Stay tuned. Maybe you're a fourth or fifth grade student or you're a parent of a fourth or fifth grade student and you've begun to work on graphing. We're gonna talk about some different types of data that you might be graphing. The two that we have today are continuous and discrete data. Let's take a look at each type. Continuous data is characterized by being uninterrupted or connected data. An example of this might be if you're uh, watching a plant grow for some science uh, experiment that you have and you have to record the height of the plant and you're doing it over six weeks time. So every week, say on Monday, you go ahead and get your measuring tape and you measure the height of the plant and you record that data. Well, you could have done it every day instead of once a week and you still would have been able to get data because the plant kept growing the entire time. So it was uninterrupted. It didn't just grow on that Monday and then the next Monday. And so the best way to graph this would be with a line graph. So you would uh, have your graph and you would say, well, on week one, uh, it was this high. And then on week two, it was this high. And then week three, and you would be collecting your data and then you would connect them with lines to show that it was actually growing in between the times when you took the data. So that's continuous data. Now discrete data is unconnected data. It's counted data or even grouped data. An example of this might be if I took a survey of my class to find out what their favorite type of pizza was. And I'm sure that some of them would say they like cheese and some would like pepperoni and another group might like supreme. So for each one, I would count how many students like cheese, how many like pepperoni. So I'm counting my data. Those data um, bits are not connected to one another. They're separate, the cheese, the pepperoni, and so forth. The best way to represent this when you graph is with a bar graph. And I might say, well, for cheese, you know, I had five students that really liked it. And for pepperoni, uh, maybe I had you know, 10 that liked that, and then Supreme, you know, perhaps two liked that particular one. Each one of these could be counted um, and grouped in the way of what pizza they liked. So for discrete, you'd like to use a bar graph. When you're trying to figure out what kind of data you have, there's a couple good questions to ask yourself. If you're looking at data and you think to yourself, I wonder if I could have taken this in smaller um, uh, time increments instead of taking it once a week, could I do it in a day? You know, each day could I have done this? And if the answer is yes, you've got continuous data. If you're looking at something and thinking, could I count each part of this data? Is each part a different part that's been counted or is it grouped in some way? You've got discrete data and you would use a bar graph to help you with that one. So these are the two different types of data that your students might be bringing home, and I hope that this has been informative to let you know how you would graph each type of data. If this video was helpful to you, click the like button, then tell a friend about teachvid.com because more great videos are on the way.